So we have our basic function. We're still using the quadratic function. And we'll just use those three key points that we've memorized. And now we're starting to apply the reflections, stretches, or compressions. What does this negative outside the function tell us? Are we changing x or are we changing y? I hope you remember that we're changing y. So our x values stay the same, the opposite of y. x values stay the same, the opposite of y. And now we have plus three outside of the function. Are we changing x or are we changing y? It's outside of the function. So we're changing y. We're taking that negative y that we just found and adding three. So x doesn't change. And now I have negative one plus three, zero plus three, and negative one plus three. Why don't you graph those ordered pairs? Did you know your graph would look like this? You should have. Let's go back and look here. We see we have this negative outside the function. We know that that's a reflection across the x-axis. And then we have this plus three, which tells us that we're going to have a vertical shift up three units. And that's what happened here. The graph is now opening down. So we reflected it across the x-axis and then we shifted it up three units. What's the domain and range for this function? The domain for all quadratic equations is the set of all real numbers. We can see that this graph is going to have its lowest values at negative infinity and its highest value is at positive three on the y-axis. Here's one more. I've got the first two steps started for you. See if you can find the ordered pairs you need and then graph the function. You saw that negative two was outside of the function, so you knew you would be changing your y coordinates. And now it doesn't matter whether you do the plus one or plus three, but like I mentioned in an earlier lesson, I usually prefer to change whatever's closest to x. Find those ordered pairs. I hope you remembered because we had a plus one here that we would be subtracting one from our x coordinates. You should also remember we had negative 2y, so these y values didn't change. All we did in this step was subtract 1 from the x coordinates. Find the final set of ordered pairs and graph the function. So for the final plus three, I hope you knew you had to add three to your y coordinates. So you had negative two y plus three at the, in the end. And you should have known what this graph would look like. If we look at what we have here in our equation, we're multiplying by negative two. The negative tells us we have a reflection across the x-axis. The absolute value of two tells us that we're going to stretch, or the absolute value of negative two tells us that we're gonna have a vertical stretch. The plus one tells me that I'm gonna shift one unit to the left. And the plus three, three units up. That's what happened here. This absolute value function is now reflected down. It opens down instead of up. We shifted it up three units and we shifted it to the left one unit. 
find the domain and the range. The domain is still the set of all real numbers. Our arrows are pointing infinitely left and right, but the lowest values will be at negative infinity. The highest value is there at three. Make sure you practice these transformations. Make sure you can tell the difference between a plus one inside the function or outside of the function. Make sure you know when you're reflecting across the x-axis or the y-axis. There are a lot of questions to practice that I've posted on the class Moodle page. You have practice inside your e-text and you can always use the homework, although I hope you're practicing those on paper before you answer them in Pearson.